A new California law could be a game changer for college sports, allowing college athletes to profit from their name, image, and likeness. But it puts the state of California at odds in a big way with the NCAA, the organization that oversees student athletes. CNN's Lucy Kavanaugh explains. Hulu has live sports. Hulu has live sports. For pro athletes, it's more than just a sport. I never tell you to drink Sprite, even if I was in a commercial for Sprite. That brings big bucks. Before I pitch, I hit Subway for my go-to. Commercials, endorsement deals, even video games. Take it to the ball! But for college athletes, those lucrative revenue streams have been off limits until now. Are you ready? Yeah, Let's ready. do it, man. <laughs> All right. California. A historic new law signed Monday by California Governor Gavin Newsom would let college athletes earn big paychecks for endorsements. The gig's up. Joining LeBron James on HBO's The Shop. Billions and billions of dollars, 14 plus billion dollars goes to these universities, goes to these colleges, billion plus revenue to the NC2A themselves. And the actual product, the folks that are putting their lives on the line, putting everything on the line, uh, are getting nothing. Young athletes have been taking advantage of for a long time. Well, that's what we all believe. Known as the Fair Pay to Play Act, the law allows college athletes to profit from their name, image, and likeness, to sign endorsement deals, and hire licensed agents to represent them. This isn't about colleges paying players anything. This is about the right of players to gain compensation through third parties, video game publishers, apparel makers, camps, that might want an athlete to sponsor them. The law pits the state against the NCAA, which pulled in more than a billion dollars in revenues during the 2016-2017 school year, and powerful universities, Texas, Texas A&M, and Ohio State, each raking in more than $200 million in 2017 to 2018. In a statement, the NCAA says, quote, it agrees changes are needed to continue to support student athletes, but improvement needs to happen on a national level through the NCAA's rules-making process. Unfortunately, this new law already is creating confusion for current and future student athletes, coaches, administrators, and campuses, and not just in California. The law is set to go into effect in 2023. California is hoping that gives other states time to change their laws, but experts say a legal battle could loom. This will get tied up in court. A game changer if the law holds up. Lucy Kafanov, CNN, Los Angeles. All right, and joining me now is Draymond Green, forward for the Golden State Warriors and a great college basketball player for four years at Michigan State. Thanks so much for being with us. You are hugely supportive of this new law. Why? Uh, first off, thanks for having me. And I'm supportive uh, of this new law because it's the right thing to do. You know, for 50 plus years, um, you've had young college athletes going out and, you know, putting on shows in their prospective fields and not being compensated for it. You know, I think it's this is a huge step in the right direction. It's kind of ironic to me that the NCAA will continue to fight this and no one's taking money out of their pocket directly. Now, indirectly, yes, because some sponsors will go directly to the source, which is being the athlete, but it's not taking money out of their ticket sales. It's not taking money out of the team sponsorships or university sponsorships that they sell, and yet the dictatorship wants to continue to go by the same system that's been broken for several years. You just call the NCAA a dictatorship. What do you mean by that? Um, you know, it's, it's their way or no way. You know, it's, if a kid is broke in college, can't find food, don't have the money to get food, don't have the time to get a job, that kid is not allowed to take money from pretty much anywhere outside of family or you're ineligible, um, you're suspended. But yet these colleges can go or the NCAA can go and make a ton of money off these student athletes. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a dictatorship. I'm going to tell you exactly what I want you to do. I'm going to take all of the profit. And if you do this, then you have to deal with the consequences. The difference in a dictatorship is that as a resident of one of those countries, you don't necessarily choose to live there. You're born into it. Students choose to go to these colleges, correct? Yes, but what's the alternative? You know, there's only so many athletes who can go straight to the pros, even if the rule wasn't in place. And so what's the alternative? Is the alternative to just go overseas and play? 
Because if, if that's the alternative we're going to follow, mm -hmm. then, you know, you're pretty much telling me that these athletes shouldn't go to college. Well, if that's the case, then these colleges don't profit anyway. No one wants to see a, a crappy product on the floor. Look, I, and I'm thrilled to be talking to you about this because you went to Michigan State for four years. You know, LeBron James and Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, signed the bill with LeBron James. LeBron James went straight to the pros. You were in college for four years. How would this law have changed your college experience? I would have changed a ton. You know, the, the several nights that you are trying to figure out what you want to eat, the nights that you're trying to figure out, you know, how to get money to go on a date or just hang out with your friends or, you know, whatever the situation is, there were several times that I didn't have it and, you know, some of my teammates didn't have it. And so what do you do next? You know, so... I think it's great of LeBron for speaking up on this issue, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people will say, oh, well, this didn't affect him. He went straight to the pros. Well, ask yourself the question. If LeBron James was able to be compensated for his likeness, maybe he would have went to Ohio State. And then it's an entirely different narrative for that university. But because he weren't able to be compensated, he probably did the smart thing in going straight to the NBA and capitalizing on his likeness more so before letting yeah. anyone else capitalize it, it on it. It certainly changes the equation for athletes making that consideration. I want to read you. Darren Ravel writes about sports, and he had an interesting take on this, and I just want to get your response. He says, I'm not arguing for or against college athlete endorsements, but this is what comes with it. Number one, the end of the NCAA. Number two, fewer rules, more cheating. Number three, complete professionalization of college sports. Players won't be tied to academics, lightly won't need to go to class. How do you respond to that? Um, I disagree with that. Uh, just because just because you're making money don't mean you'll go to class. Um, like that that really doesn't make sense to me. There's a bunch of students on campus with jobs that still go to class. Now they're probably not making as much or near as much as what a, a college athlete would make off their likeness. But it's no different than any other profession. There's a ton of professions that don't make as near as much money as an NBA player, as an NFL player. You still have to go do your job. Those students are still attending class. And so um, I completely disagree with that. Just because you make money don't mean you lose all responsibility and just ride off into the sunset. You still have your responsibilities. And a part of you being able to capitalize on that likeness is being eligible. Well, in order right. to be eligible, you have to attend class.